Welcome to the first all virtual, they're kind of all virtual, but all virtually video edition of the KSO show, myself and Derek Young. Derek, you look great today. We just started recording and you said before that this is the first time you have presented yourself appropriately in how many days? It's probably been close to two months, uh, at least <laughs> of, of this extent. Derek and I had talked about doing this for the first time yesterday. I pushed it off for a variety of reasons, but one of which finally being when it came time to do it, I just didn't want to get ready. I hadn't gotten myself ready in days and I wasn't about to start. This was Derek's idea. Derek's been absolutely dominating things on the site for us, well, for three years, but specifically for the last couple of, uh, last couple of months. An idea Derek wanted to do was a, a Q&A that's going to show on our YouTube channel. You're going to see it, of course, uh, on the KSO website. You've given us questions on the foundation that he's asked for. I'm just going to run through a few. Ask him. Derek's going to answer. If I have thoughts or a better answer than him, I'll, I'll slip it in. Uh, we're only going to go about 15 minutes on this because we want this to be something that doesn't take too long and you can enjoy. We're going to do multiple videos like this in a week. If we can't get through the questions in 15 minutes, but I don't expect we will, we'll do another one and ask more. So here we go. I'm not going to promise to ask every question that was asked. Some are jokes. I understand that. And some are not. This is probably a joke, but I want to start off with a fun one. DY KSU fan 684. Are the rumors true that KSU, that means Kansas State University, will no longer be in existence in a few weeks? <laughs> No, no. That, you, are you fine. confident? I'm pretty confident. I'm also confident there'll be a football season. I'm just not confident as to win. Okay, well, I'm going to hold you to it. I mean, before we get to the next question, you you and I have discussed the idea, the possibility of, I don't think it's going to, I'm not going to get into all oh, when stuff going to happen because we don't know. We don't know. But you've thought about like the work-life balance possibility of three seasons in a calendar year, right? Two football seasons and a basketball season? Yeah, and just the – <laughs> that will it'd be a stress on us <laughs> players it, it's not really practical but not a lot right. it is right now. yeah if it I mean hey I'm gonna whatever hand they deal me I'm gonna play it you know but I have to definitely thought like whoa three years three seasons two you no know, two concurrent football and basketball seasons at the same time and then they end and then another football season would start like what like three months later I mean right. the, there's uh, even been concern on my part too and, and we're kind of getting the weeds a little no, bit. no this is fun well, I mean we yeah. have 15 minutes delayed. and if we get to more questions we'll add them to the next show it's fine yeah if a delayed football season happens which is probably greater than 50 percent I would imagine yeah like what does that mean for basketball does that delay basketball or do they try to play them at the same time right or does basketball get the short end of the stick just because it's not no, as big and, of a revenue and, yeah. for this yeah, no, it's, it's a fascinating conversation, I think. Uh, Nooch Baloney, I always, you know, it's not, Baloney's spelled funny, you know. Um, I can handle this some, too, if you don't feel very comfortable, even though I don't have a great answer for it, D.Y. Just ask about the basketball scholarship, what happens for it. Of course, there's one left open. Uh, I'll jump in, and if you want to add something, it, short answers, I've, I've talked to some sources around this. They're just not in a tremendous hurry. I think grad transfer options are out there, of course. Um, they, they feel good about with their roster makeup right now. As far, as far as names, I don't have a specific one that I think you really need to watch out for. Maybe Derek's – he's paid better attention to me and has a better answer, but that's the best I can give you from talking with people who would kind of know around it that there's not an extreme rush around it. I can probably get a little bit more specific yeah, in what it. at least I would do or what Ooh. I would expect. Uh, Flando would probably be the one to give you names I or know. anything. He'll be on these. He'll be on these too. We can do three-way Zoom calls with these. He's busy right now, but we'll get Flando on. But if we have third, we'd have a four because three would look funny. So get Logan on one of these. Yeah. We could bring on like Kurt from Brown of Bosco's. We could Bruce. bring on who? Bruce. Bruce. Well, uh, he would do it. We could bring on Lowry. Do cop oh, anyway, I'm getting off in the in the weeds again. Yeah, keep, I guess. Keep answering. I, I think what I, this doesn't mean this what is what they will do. But what I would do and what I would expect them to do is probably go a transfer route because they've just, you know, probably hit the cap. I would think what you would right. want in terms of a high school additions in one class. And on top of that, I just – they're a little big heavy, probably more big heavy than even I would want to be right now. So I can't imagine another big – it has to be a guard or a wing. Well said. K-Style 79, he gave us a number of questions. I like all of them. I do too, I remember. So I'm going to read you each of each of them. I think there's a chance, DUI and watchers, this may take us through 15 minutes if you give us good answers to each of these, and that's okay. This series may just become us, DUI. This is our first time we're kind of doing a trial run. Maybe we just have a running tally of questions. We come back and just keep answering. We don't know. I like it. So this is K-Style 79. How creative have Kleiman and staff addressed selling the program without recruits being able to travel to campus? The motto has always been, once we get him, them here, the place will be able to sell itself. So, of course, the question there, DUI, to start you off, how creative have they been in getting recruits to campus virtually and selling it without having them here? Yeah, when you speak around just the uh... – recruits, high school coaches, uh, just anyone that's really familiar with the recruiting process that might have someone 
you know, associated with K-State or is, you know, aware of what K-State is doing, they'll tell you, you know, K-State's typically one of the more aggressive schools right now in terms of getting kids on the Zoom calls, on the FaceTime calls, sending them materials, um, just trying to sway them any way they can. And, yep. and in terms of innovation, it, I mean, they're, they're on the, the cutting edge. I mean, I think there's a handful of schools that are probably on the cutting edge of that type of innovation. And most of those are actually not necessarily the blue blood schools. It is the right. schools like Kansas State. And that's probably because they're more forced to be creative. They can't just recruit on their brand name alone. Um, they don't have that luxury to do so. So, you know, I hear Kansas State's being pretty creative. Virginia, I've heard, is fairly creative right now. Rutgers, even, with Greg Schiano as their coach. And even KU's been – I've heard yeah. some really good things about what they've done, what they've had to do. Unless Miles, you know, hate him or love him, he's always been someone that's a little bit different. about it. Not afraid to be unique at all. But, um, yeah, they're, they're definitely being creative, definitely being innovative. And, and I guess some of the examples, I mean, I've heard, you know, from a recruit – and I'm sure he's not the only one, of course, is that they kind of do a, a four-step process with with a lot of their top targets in terms of, right. you know, they're going to show them this part of campus virtually one week and then do the next, the second week, and do the next, the third week. And it's almost like an official visit of sorts, just virtually and broken into four parts. Makes sense to me. Well said. I, this is something I've read a lot about in your recruiting notebooks, but I appreciate your answer to that too. Again, from K-Style 79. Well, Steve Standard, along with Van Malone, be able to open up a pipeline to the East Coast recruiting. I know you've written a lot about the Carolinas and work being done there. Just in general, is that something they're able to open up for K-State a little bit? Uh, they'll probably cherry pick, and it'll kind of be like the other out-of-region locations, like Atlanta, you know, like Chicago, uh, parts of Louisiana, Florida, of course. It'll probably be one of those, I guess I would call it like an auxiliary area for K-State where they're not going to make it you know, like Texas or Kansas, where they're taking six or seven kids a class from that, you know, space, but they're, they're maybe cherry pick one or two a cycle or one or two every other cycle. It's probably what they want to do. I don't think Van Malone would be, you know, all that involved with sure. that. Um, I do think it would be Steve Standard. That's kind of, you know, his, uh, his home, his territory to recruit for K-State, at least out of the region. And, and Chuck Lilly, the scouting analyst, will probably be pretty integral. Right. In that part of the country, too, since he, he spent four years at Clemson. No doubt about it. He asked a nicely worded question about expecting the start of football season. You know, we've kind of already talked about that. I will reference a couple of the, the possibilities he named, though. Um, could the non-conference schedule be eliminated or reduced? I guess we could, let's, we could speculate some. Again, this is us just speculating. We don't know when it's going to start. Derek and I don't have information that we're not sharing or that people are calling us up and saying, hey, college football is starting then and there. But I guess to me, D.Y., here's what I'll say instead of a question. I like the idea of get if, as if you could lose the non-conference, it still start on time. So I'm going to get some dates wrong, but say non-conference starts September 1st, you just lose those games and you start the season October 1st against conference teams. I know that'd be a crazy season. I know it'd be a lot would be lost, but to me, that's more appealing than trying to play a whole season starting in January or something. You may disagree. What do you think about that stuff? I, kind of, I do like the idea of that then probably starting the season in January just to have some semblance of a calendar and, and timing of things. And I guess the idea would be to, to finish the season ahead of a second wave. And that makes sense to me to yeah. do it that way. The only logistical nightmares of that would probably be the, I guess the travel and the lodging that may already be booked. And I don't know sure. how refundable it is in some cases because Tons of the contract games and all those yeah, teams. the contract yeah. games that you have to get out of some schools get, a, you know, over a million dollars for, for games. I know some of the FCS schools do. So there's that hiccup as well. And, and part of the reason why college football is such, it's obviously a big revenue sport. It's also a big expense sport right. at the end of the day too. And that's something to consider is that, you know, when they travel to a game and they're flying, that's probably, a, I would imagine, almost a $100,000 expense just to play that game. Oh, you have to imagine. So I have a few more I want to ask from K-Style79. I think it will take us through our time today. When we'll come back, I'm not done yet, but it looks like Black Ema will be next. He has a really good question about where Skylar Thompson would rank amongst Big 12 quarterbacks in 2020. And D.Y., I don't have an answer to that right now. I'd have to be like, well, Texas has so, you know, has Sam Ellinger and Oklahoma has Spencer Rattler. And that would be really, really annoying. But tomorrow, maybe I could actually have an answer to that question. Yeah, Brock Purdy. You know? Ex yeah, exactly. There's a lot. I was, I was thinking through it. I think I can get them all. You know, Charlie Brewer, Alan Bowman be back. Anywho, um, D.Y., tell me a player on offense and a player on defense 
who will have a surprise performance this season. Just somebody you like, you know, that on each side of the ball, you know, surprise performance is a, it's a good question, but that's a tricky term. Just somebody you like on both sides of the ball that we're not talking much about. Yeah, someone that doesn't get talked much about, but I thought at least it seems thinking now, it seems, for, it seems like forever ago. Looking back, I thought it had a decent finish to the season and became a little bit more of an integral part of the offense was Y. King Gill. Good call. And yep. it was someone that last spring, or we went to, I think, we went to Media Day, Big 12 Media Day, I think in June and July last I know exactly, year. Exactly, I know exactly, at the climbing Chris sidebar. Clyman said y. King Gill was the best wide receiver they had the entire spring. And I didn't think that necessarily manifested itself probably ever during the season just because Dalton Schoen was pretty good throughout. And right. Was the most consistent LA, LA Charger. LA Charger. And Dalton, then yeah. some other guys. But I think Y. King Gill really turned it on the last three or four games. If you have what Chris Kleiman said about his spring, I think there's a good chance that he could be a breakout contributor yeah. on the offensive side of the ball. And then um, flip on defense. Somebody that you're just not getting enough hype about that you think could make an impact this year for k on defense. You know, that, that's probably a little bit trickier for me. Um, well, let's, let me think. Let me talk with you. I'm putting you on the spot all the time. You know I mean? Yeah, th- obviously. It's not an obvious one. What about, what about, I mean, these are guys you talk about, you know, but what about guys like Drew Wiley or Eli Huggins? Like, I thought they played, I know they're not like new names and you've talked about them being, you know, potential, you know. Eli Huggins is good because he hasn't but, played a whole lot. Yeah, Eli Huggins hadn't played a lot. I thought he was very good last year. Sincerely very good. Very good when he's he played, you yeah. know. I don't think he's going to be a guy who's going to start next year because you've done a nice job of explaining how the two D tackles, they're not just D tackle positions. You know what I mean? It's not like D tackle, D tackle. They have different responsibilities. And you've explained that. So I understand, mm-hmm. you know, that a guy like Huggins may play 25% of the snaps this year, but I think he's a good player. And I think he's somebody who will impact games that we probably don't talk about a lot. Yeah. I think Eli Huggins is probably the best answer that I could give. And that was good that you uh, brought him up. Yeah. That was all you, uh, I mean, people. If, in case people forgot about him, Justin Hughes is a really good linebacker. Yeah, assuming that's a good he's hundred percent. Um, that's crazy. And then uh, Tyron Lewis is, will be a first-year safety. I imagine that he might surprise people, but he'll be go through the freshman hiccup thing as well too. That are probably get on people's nerves like they did last year for Wayne Jones when Wayne Jones was fine. Um, right. But, uh, and then, but someone that they really love, and I could see playing more than people are anticipating is Will Jones. Yeah, uh, Jerome McPherson's going to start at nickel. Will Jones will be his backup, but Jerome McPherson could have used probably a little bit more depth behind him last year. He oh. got really beat up, and they had to play him anyways because the guy behind him was beat up as well, Jonathan Durham. And because Jonathan Durham, and and I love this about him, is that guy would <laughs> would commit suicide on a football he field. He sure would. He play, I mean. This I know they know how annoying though. We know we don't tell you stuff like I, I'm. We don't do that very often. I like to think. Jonathan Durham dealt with some stuff. You know what I mean? Like, if he was playing, he was hurt, period. I mean, throughout his career at K-State. Man, you said something that made me think of something to say to you, but I forgot what it was. It was about, gosh, I don't know. You had a really wise statement, but I'm just going to let it have to let it sit, I feel like, and move on. Yeah, I mean, Will oh, Jones. No, 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 it was about the Nichols. You're right, Will Jones. Sorry. Because Will Jones and Jeremy McPherson, not only are you right about all, everything you said, they also offer, like, different players. You know what I mean? Like, you could play, play different kind of things. Not that Jeremy McPherson can't cover – or that Will Jones can't play the run. Both those things are false. But I think both have shrinks in the other ones to where there may be some teams, if they're, you know, that Jeremy McPherson makes a lot of sense at nickel. If you're playing more of a big nickel, you know, safety type of nickel, maybe a lot of teams where you're playing more of a third corner, you know. Um, That's true. Will, Jeremy, yeah, a lot of the NFL teams are doing that now too. Big nickel, little nickel, and yep. they can really do that with McPherson and Jones. Exactly. Um I'm going to reword this. He asks who will be the next coach to leave. I'm going to change it, Derek, because I'm not going to make you predict a coach to leave. Tell me a coach on K-State staff that you think will continue to have a lot of interest from outside jobs because of the job they're doing. Well, I think if he continues his recruiting success, Bam alone makes a lot of sense. I, I doubt that happens just because the assistant head coach title was put on to protect that very thing, but you never know what might be available out there. And Coach Climate did say he's going to be a future head coach. So yep, he um, did. at some point, that will, if he's correct, though, That'll come to fruition. We'll see. Uh, I like Joe Klanderman a lot, and I think his value. And, and I don't think many people in the country know how good of a coach he is, but they may find out. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you one more, Derek, and we're going to wrap it up. We'll come back tomorrow with Black Elon's question about Skylar Thompson's rank in the Big 12. This question is about who's behind Skylar Thompson. Who will be QB2 to start the season? Hypothetically, let's say it all goes normal, D.Y. Practices start July or August, whenever. You know, everything goes normal. 
who's the quarterback number two when the season kicks off for K-State? I think a lack of spring football probably prevents much change here. I, I think it'll still be Nick Oss myself. Yep. Yeah, man, I was hoping you would say something else, and I'd be like, no, it would be Nick Oss, because of course. But that wraps us up for today. This was Derek's idea. I really appreciate it. We've got a lot of questions left. We didn't get through very much. So don't, please don't be discouraged if you watch this, your question didn't get, didn't get asked. We're not going to promise that we're doing this on a daily basis or something like that, but we want to do it multiple times a week. And if you keep having great questions for us, we'll be able to keep doing it. So Derek, before I hit stop recording and then this whole virtual thing, do you want to add anything to these guys? Tell your friends. That's correct.